In this video, we're going to explore the newest wave at the forefront of quantum computing, quantum classical hybrid supercomputers. Recently, several efforts have all come out at a similar time, racing to implement a quantum classical hybrid supercomputer. NVIDIA will be deploying their CUDA Q software stack in collaboration with several quantum computing companies and supercomputing centers, and IBM has released plans to integrate one of their over 100 qubit processors with a supercomputer in Japan. Many of these are already planned to be integrated by 2025 at the latest, and the wheels have already started turning on these projects with funding sources secured. In this video, I'm going to try and explain why they are doing this, and what it means for the future of quantum computing. But first, a big disclaimer. The quantum computers used in these implementations will not be fault tolerant. Short of a research miracle, the quantum computers that are interfaced with the classical supercomputers will be noisy and have few tens up to a thousand qubits. This is the current state of the art in quantum computing depending on the way the hardware is implemented. For reference, IBM, who use superconducting qubits, just recently released a QPU with over a thousand qubits for the first time. Qera just released a 256 qubit neutral atom based QPU for the first time. The point of these quantum enabled supercomputers, as they are called, is that they will usher in a new age of research in the next phase of quantum computing. These quantum enabled supercomputers will not cure cancer overnight or send astronauts through wormholes as some articles would have you believe. Okay, with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get to the main points. First, I'll talk about what a quantum enabled supercomputer even is. Next, after that, I'll address the research that these quantum enabled supercomputers will allow. There are three main points here quantum algorithm research, error correction research, and hardware integration research. Finally, I'll discuss who the main players are at this current stage to the best of my knowledge and what their roles are. Alright, so first, what even is a quantum enabled supercomputer? Well, very simply, a quantum enabled supercomputer is a supercomputer with a quantum processing unit, or QPU, as part of its architecture. This means that the QPU is seamlessly integrated with the rest of the computer. These systems will likely consist of several processing units, including a CPU, many GPUs, and a QPU. This will allow for rapid and efficient control of the quantum computer at a scale not previously seen. Okay, now let's get into talking about the different kinds of research that you can do using one of these systems. First, quantum algorithm research. Until very recently, quantum algorithms have only been really tested on very small quantum computers. Only within the last few years have IBM and other quantum computing companies released QPUs with more than 100 qubits. Three to four years ago when I was in college, the biggest quantum computer available for use on Qiskit was like 32 qubits. These classical supercomputers that are directly linked to quantum computers will be able to compute some very heavy calculations and do direct comparisons between state-of-the-art classical simulation and state-of-the-art quantum computation on the same machine. This will enable strides forward in the development of quantum algorithms in a variety of fields, but the industry right now is predominantly excited about biology, chemistry, and machine learning. Additionally, this will be a great proof-of-concept demonstration for how future fault-tolerant quantum computers will be able to accelerate computations by outsourcing specific parts of the calculation to the QPU. Similarly to the way that in AI research, often hard matrix math is outsourced to GPUs. These hybrid quantum classical supercomputers will also likely be used for quantum error correction research. If we want to push quantum algorithms research forward in the near term, to make up for the fact that qubits are noisy, we need, well, better qubits. There are two ways to tackle this. The first is to actually physically improve the materials, fabrication techniques, and circuit designs that make up the individual qubits, and while there are people working on this, there is a way to make qubits better without having to engineer new materials or devices. This is quantum error correction. Quantum error correction is a series of techniques that basically boil down to us, as physicists, knowing something about what causes qubits to decohere or lose information to the environment. By combining multiple individual physical qubits into a single more robust logical qubit, physicists have been able to demonstrate that both theoretically and experimentally, computation fidelity can be improved. The thing is, as processors scale up and error correction schemes get more complicated, it will become more and more difficult to know things as physicists observing. 
Thus, having an AI system monitor and aid error correction is something that several quantum computing companies are considering. As a result, having a powerful and connected supercomputer will significantly aid the quantum computer in successfully implementing error correction at a large scale. Last, and certainly not least, is hardware integration. At the end of the day, currently, fault-tolerant, quantum-enabled supercomputers do not exist. Getting to the point where we have a fully fault-tolerant, quantum-enabled supercomputer will take a lot of time, effort, investment, and especially mistakes in learning. This is where these early quantum-enabled supercomputers will be incredibly helpful. While enabling researchers to probe into quantum algorithms and error correction, they will also serve as a pilot example to quantum computing companies looking toward the future of how to integrate quantum hardware with classical hardware. While companies like Quantum Machines and others exist for this express purpose, never before has there been a direct project of this scale to work on. As quantum computers scale, fundamentally, things will have to change. New engineering problems will always arise that must be tackled and lead to a better understanding of the technology. Tackling these problems now ensures that when quantum computing technology matures, we will not be held back by our classical interfaces to these machines. So now that we've discussed the why, let's get into the who. Some of the biggest players in this push include quantum computing companies like IBM, hardware companies like NVIDIA, and national computing centers in several countries, including Germany, Japan, and Poland. Here is a quick rundown of four of the major ones that I've come across. First, we have the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, or IST, in Japan, collaborating with NVIDIA and Qera. These partners will collaborate on the ABCIQ supercomputer. AST will supply the ABCIQ supercomputer, a supercomputer with a capacity of 54 petaflops. That's a thousand trillion operations per second. NVIDIA will supply more than 2,000 NVIDIA H100 tensor core GPUs and more than 500 nodes interconnected by the NVIDIA Quantum 2 InfiniBand. This setup allows for fast and efficient data transfer to the GPUs from the QPU and CPU. Qera will supply a 256 qubit QPU made from rubidium neutral atoms. The second collaboration is a collaborative effort between IBM and Riken, also from Japan, to integrate an IBM Huron superconducting qubit based QPU, which has more than 100 qubits, with the Fugaku supercomputer, which has achieved a staggering 442 petaflops. The third collaboration will be a collaborative effort between the Jupiter supercomputer at the ULIC Supercomputing Center, supercharged by the NVIDIA GH200 Grace Hopper superchip. Jupiter is set to be the first exaflop scale supercomputer. The architecture will be similar to the ICE collaboration, with the NVIDIA chip predominantly working to integrate the CPU and QPU, as well as to provide support for artificial intelligence related computations. The QPU in this collaboration will be a superconducting processor provided by IQM. Finally, there will be a collaborative effort between PSNC, NVIDIA, and ORCA, which is taking place in Poland. This collaboration will integrate two ORCA PT1 photonic quantum processors into a PSNC supercomputer. Again, this will be accelerated by NVIDIA Hopper chips. These collaborations seem to be the front-running partnerships in quantum-enabled supercomputing right now. I know this was a bit of a different style video, so please let me know if these types of updates on the current state of the art in the industry are of interest to you guys. Until next time, I've been Lucas, this has been Lucas's Lab, and thanks for watching.